it's time for you to stop studying coding. That's right, put down your books, get off Reddit slash learn programming and close YouTube. Wait, not yet though, like after you watch this video. In fact, what if I told you that the fact that you spend so much time studying coding is the exact reason why you struggle with actually learning it. Coding is not a science, it is a skill. And the only way you learn a skill is by practicing it a lot. So if you want to learn to code, the only things you should have open are BS Code and Google.com. The thing is, you already sort of know that, don't you? Yet you don't code because there's a deeper root problem here that's causing you to not be able to do the work that you kind of already know that you should be doing. I've coached people before on this exact same thing. And I've realized that usually there are three core reasons that stop people from sitting their ass down on their computers and actually coding. And it's always one of these three reasons that causes people to fail at learning the code. Because if you didn't have any of these three problems, you would be coding every day and it wouldn't be a problem for you. And at the end of the day, even if you don't think you're smart, no matter your background, you would learn it. In fact, often dumb people or people who are the least confident in their skills have the best chance of learning coding, but we'll come back to that later in a bit. So the absolute best way to start coding more is just to start thinking of ideas that are useful for you in your own life. For example, I'm here in Thailand during the rainy season. So I wanted to plan my activities in such a way that I can be outside when it's sunny and working inside when it's raining. And I was able to do that by coding my own weather app using a weather API by tomorrow.io. Well, let's look at how you could do the same. I want you to go to tomorrow.io, sign up, grab their free API key by clicking here. We start by importing a few things up here. Then we define the URL with the tomorrow.io API, then the API key, which I've hidden here. Then we need to get the exact coordinates of our location, which I got by simply going into Google Maps and placing a pin, right click, and you can see the coordinates just right here. Then we define the fields, which define which information about weather are we interested in. And if you want to find all the options that we can use, you can go and consult tomorrow.io's documentation. Then we define the units, which can either be metric or imperial. Then we define the start and end time, our time zone, some parameters. We send the request by calling request dog get if the response is okay we pretty print the response which looks just like this and voila we have a bunch of weather information for our location where we can take our programming magic is by combining this with something like home systems for example here in our massive villa in thailand we could set the air conditioning to adjust based on the temperature outside or we could warn ourselves of tropical storms like this crazy better go inside. So go and build your own weather app using tomorrow.io by clicking on the link below. And thank you for tomorrow.io for sponsoring this video. And that is how you start. You just start with a very simple and humble idea. And then you just start working on it. You don't worry about making something amazing. And most importantly, you don't wait to start when you are ready. Dude, we're currently building an app that is written using Electron.js, a framework I had never heard of when we started. And this app uses a Chrome extension to talk to your browser. I had never built a Chrome extension ever in my life before we started this startup. It's a nightmare, by the way. Don't, don't try that. We style it using Tailwind and I had never used Tailwind in my life. My point is, every day I start my day with a task and with no idea in the world how to accomplish it. But I just figure it out as I go. I still Google how to center a div every single time. As an engineer, you're not supposed to know what to do, but you are supposed to know how to figure it out. So that's the first core reason you're sitting there watching another dumbass YouTuber for help on how to learn to code instead of actually coding because you think you need to learn it before you can use it. You don't. Just use it. So now we're almost ready to talk about why it's actually better to be kind of dumb than smart when you're learning to code. But first we need to talk about the second core reason that you cannot sit down to code. And to understand it, we need to talk about how Apple has fooled all of us with their MacBooks. So when you go and buy a new product, like for example a computer, and you watch reviews of all the options out there, and you learn, oh the Dell xpxxx 3 wine 7 looks good, and then someone already says, oh but the graphics aren't quite strong enough to play Fortnite Elite Edition, but oh, also the Asus Raptor FFD XXX looks great too. 
And this is how Apple has tricked me into buying all of this stuff. If I convince myself to buy a MacBook, it's so much more straightforward to just pick from the two to three options and just choose the specs rather than from the 200 Windows options. The same phenomenon is what happens to you when you try to start a new coding project. Oh, should I use React and build a front-end portfolio? But wait, then I will miss out on all the back-end job openings, so maybe I should go for full stack instead. But wait, there's someone on Twitter saying Next.js is the next big thing. Or maybe I should use Tomorrow.io's weather API to make a weather app. That's the one that you should pick, by the way. Link down below. You have all of these options. And because coding a project or a full portfolio of projects is such a massive time commitment, you are overwhelmed by all the options and you end up choosing nothing. And that's the second reason. You let yourself get overwhelmed as if you're buying a Windows laptop. Now, finally, here's why it's actually better to be dumb than to be smart if you want to learn to code. So when a dumb guy starts learning to code, he does something like this. He first learns HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. He uses them to build a basic websites that are very simple and, well, basic. He doesn't have a clue about how any of these languages work under the hood. He doesn't know how React actually compiles into JavaScript or how context management works until he actually starts needing to know these things. And any smart ass engineer guy on Twitter would literally be laughing at him. But he has built a website and as a result, he has gained confidence and slowly but surely, he starts building up a portfolio. And he actually learns a lot in this process. By contrast, here's what a smart guy does when he starts learning the code. He spends his time learning theory. He learns how hash maps work in theory rather than just building stuff, encountering situations where he needs something like a hash map and then learning it when he actually needs to. He never builds anything. And as a result, he learns less than the dumb guy. So I think because most people who get into tech like to see themselves as smart people, most of them are sort of misguided about how to actually learn programming. There is a time when learning theory becomes useful, but the right time to learn the theory is once you've already encountered 10 situations where you don't understand how use effects work, for example, that is the time when you should go and, okay, let me take 30 minutes to actually learn the foundations of how a use effect works, for example. So stop trying to be smart, get humble, get your hands dirty and start with an embarrassingly simple project, then add a feature to it, then add another feature to it, and another, and another. So stop trying to be smart, be dumb, and you'll learn faster. Let me know which of these reasons you can relate to most in the comments down below. If you like this video and you want to hear more about these topics in a bit more precise detail, I think you would enjoy my newsletter, Internet Make Club. It's completely free. You can sign up. If you want to follow a structured program to actually learn the code, as in the things that you actually need, and then how to actually turn these skills into a full-time job as a software engineer, I do also have my paid program down below. And if you're feeling lost with learning the code, I just want you to know that it's okay. I was there too. Even after you get over these three core reasons, you're still prone to make lots of mistakes when you're a beginner. Here in this video, I share the biggest mistakes that I made that I really don't want you to make. So I highly recommend you go watch this video next if you're feeling stuck because I think it's really gonna help you.